We've got some not very humble loads going today. Welcome back everybody, David Shepard here on the Humble Hotshot channel with a little bit of a different video for you guys today. Uh, Blue Steel, our Humble Hotshot rig is actually getting some work done in the shop. So we're doing a couple shipping container runs for our buddy here with uh, an interstate shipping container company. So we got the full 40 foot tandem dual CDL hotshot rig today. So I'm gonna show you guys the equipment we're using. I'm gonna show you guys what I'm picking up, how I strap it down, all of that right after a quick word of scripture. So today, really short one, but also really profound. I wanna share Malachi 3 verse six, which the Lord is speaking and he says, I, the Lord, do not change. So there you have it. That's just speaking of the amazing, unchanging, just rock solid character of the Lord, which, you know, it may not seem like such an incredible thing until you really think about just how wishy-washy, I'll say, we could be as humans. You know, we're kind of pulled in different directions and maybe some of you guys are more consistent than others, but I've seen it in my own life where whether I struggle with certain sins or just have certain desires and then the next day I could be thinking completely differently and our emotions are up and down and and you know we I, I strive to learn not to trust my emotions because I know how fleeting and changing they are but it's so refreshing to just look to the Lord and know that he is unchanging unlike us so thanks for listening I hope that encourages you guys and if you're looking for a little stability in your life look to the rock look to the one who never changes the lord god and our savior jesus christ so thanks guys i hope that uh encourages some of you and now give you a look at the tandem dual 40 foot this is actually a kerr built trailer made for shipping containers you can see it was fully wood decked but um missing some decking there but not a big deal for shipping containers so we are picking up a 40 foot high cube so it's going to be similar to these units here that's actually a 45 footer on the bottom but it's going to look just like that one 40 foot high cube meaning it's uh nine and a half feet tall rather than eight and a half so we're going to get forklift loaded here shortly and i'm going to show you guys how i strap it down but give you another little look at the equipment we're using we're running a fourth gen ram dually this time so one ton dually again with the 40 foot tandem dual trailer and um, finally putting our class a cdl back to use i guess so instead of the typical lightweight non-cdl hotshot stuff thought i'd bring you guys along for this one like i said we're helping our buddy out well our truck's getting worked on and um, probably going to end up doing a couple of these runs from Denver over to Glenwood Springs area of Colorado so we will be going through Glenwood Canyon might try to shoot some footage there but um, otherwise I'm going to pick this up once we get loaded pretty neat these uh, forklifts that they use that might be the box we're getting right there so we'll see if he comes back our way but a little bit different I haven't run the uh, CDL weight stuff in a little while so there are some differences. Thankfully, with this equipment, um, it really doesn't change my driving style or anything too much. This truck has nice exhaust brake and um, just really set up good for pulling these shipping containers. We are going over the high mountain passes, so that puts quite a strain on everything. Um, and this truck, uh, basically the biggest thing you gotta watch with this truck, pulling a 40 foot container up the hills, is the EGTs. So we're gonna be keeping an eye on that as we go up and uh, I'll take some footage inside the truck just to show you guys. So catch back up soon. All right guys, just like that, we are loaded up. We got a 40 foot high cube shipping container and we've got four straps on here. Unfortunately, I apologize, I'm not able to film while I'm actually throwing these straps, but the way I do this is from the ratchet binder side, I pull out a bunch of slack I get about three feet from the hook end and I use that weight of the hook on the end of the strap to kind of get a pendulum going and whip it over top, over the top of the container. Can be a little bit of a challenge, uh, especially with these high cubes, once again, at nine and a half feet tall, but that's the way I do it. There's different methods. I used to do kind of the baseball throw with the whole roll of the strap, but that could be pretty heavy and come close to throwing out my shoulder doing that. So, hey, if you could do that, more power to you but I found that kind of the whip method using the weight of the hook 
is the best method that I've found to do this. And otherwise, we've just got four straps on a 40, so one in the first five feet at the very front, and then one every 10 feet is legal for shipping containers. Everything's inside the rub rail, as you can see. And then I do that half twist in each strap down both sides, one half twist, and that will keep those straps from flapping going down the road. So I mentioned this in other videos, but anytime you have a long vertical run of strap, I'm sure you've all seen it. The straps get to flapping in the wind. It could cause chafing and basically cause your straps to fail. So um, make sure these doors are closed. We're gonna check our serial number before we leave. But otherwise, that's the gist of it. Inside the rub rail again on the ratchet side, use our bar to crank those down and we'll check them after the first few miles, hit a couple good bumps and probably get another click on all of them and we'll go from there. So praise God, I'll see you guys soon. Alright guys, we're back in the truck. We're headed up Vail Pass with the 40 foot high cube behind us there, 40 foot shipping container and give you guys a look on the numbers on the 4th gen here. Oh, I need to back down in fact. That pyrometer right in front of us there is the thing we really got to watch. You can see we're already sitting about trying to keep it around 1200 degrees. Not, man, that is tough. So we're going to slow down a little bit. Our other numbers look okay. The coolant temp is rising a little bit. You can see there, 228. Um, as long as you keep the truck moving, that doesn't seem to get too bad. But I've really got to keep my foot out of it here because we don't want to in this truck we don't want to go sustain too much above 1200 degrees on those exhaust gas temperatures so it's quite a grade up here pulling those 40 foot containers they catch a lot of wind and you know this container trailer is about 10,000 pounds empty and then you put a 8,500 9,000 pound container on there so we've got some weight and we've also got quite a bit of wind resistance so it takes a conscious effort to keep those EGTs down and just help with the longevity of this truck. So down to about 45 and yep, getting passed by semi trucks. So I'm gonna pay attention to that, but I just wanted to give you guys a look at what it's like hauling these containers up a mountain in a fourth gen 6.7 Cummins with the ice in. So here we go. All right, you guys, give you a look at the damage in Glenwood Canyon. You can see how much changed the route of the river, and they are working on it now. Wow, digging out that sinkhole and all the debris that's flowed across the road. Pretty impressive. All right, guys, so we got our 40-foot high cube shipping container to the delivery site here pulled all the straps off and now I'm going to show you guys how this curb built tilt deck container trailer works. So we're going for that slot right there in between these other 40s. So I'm going to jump in the truck, back it in right to the end where we want it and then tilt the deck and show you guys how that works. So let's jump back in the truck here and get her dropped. Right in that slot. There's plenty of room on this one, thankfully. So let's see here. Drop the windows down. And we're just gonna back right in. Got plenty of room on this one actually, so we're just gonna keep it centered and should be able to go just even with these others I need to straighten up a little bit so i'm going to go past it a little bit straighten up and this trailer does have a little bit of a tendency to drag the container with it just for about a foot or so so i'm going to go just past where i want it and then let's start our tilt i'll show you guys how that works so it's like right about there Grab the old remote here and jump on out. Could even fit in between on these ones, so Let's show you guys how it works. Again, pretty simple. Basically, there's a little bit of overhang. 
little bit of overhang at the end of the trailer here. So all we're gonna do is start tilting up using our little handy remote here. Looks like we need to come back a little bit more. So I'm gonna jump in the truck, scoot back just, well, actually let's see, once that pivots down, we might be just about right. I don't think it's super critical on these. So wireless remote works nice and basically just tilt this down until the corner posts hit the ground and drive out from under it. Simple as that. You can see we got a whole row of 40s over here. And then we're gonna put 20 footers in these parking spots, 20 foot containers. So I guess while I'm doing this, I'll explain. I mentioned in the beginning that we're just running a couple of these CDL loads with my buddy's equipment. Well, our truck's in the shop, and I did just get word um, that it's done. Basically, it just transmission started just um, not downshifting properly, doing a couple weird things. Didn't feel like the tranny itself was causing problems, but something electronic, and sure enough, they diagnosed that it needed an overdrive lockup solenoid. So they went ahead and replaced that. They said everything else in the trans looks good. So we're actually going to use this tilt deck trailer to go pick up our truck once this container is dropped. So we'll be back in business here shortly and can show you guys, we're just going for a little bit of gap. So the container's got weight on the ground, but then the trailer's not gonna drag on the ground itself. So I don't like walking in between these when they're tilted up like that. You know, just in case anything wanted to move or slide, I don't wanna be in between those containers. So I'm gonna walk around the long way and then I'll just show you guys how we drive out from underneath them here and you can see this, this is how the tilt deck works gooseneck ball stays locked and then gives you all that tilt range to be able to drop these boxes so back in the truck and it's as simple as just driving out so let's see if I can give you guys a view when it comes off Yep, container staying put and the trailer sliding out from under it, so we are in business. Trailer might be catching the ground a little bit, and boom, there it is. So simple as that, there's lots of different equipment that can move these shipping containers. This one is specific for containers, so there you have it guys, hope you enjoyed following along with this uh, CDL hot shop setup. And then we're gonna go pick up my truck, like I said, I'll show you guys loading that on the tilt deck and wrap up the video there, so thanks. Alrighty guys, we got the trailer tilted back up and we got the humble hot shot rig back. New solenoid in the transmission, also had the tranny service again, so Fresh fluid, fresh filter, bands adjusted. They said everything else looks in there, looks good in there, so should be good to go. Blue steel back in action, and I figured I'd just show you guys putting her up on the trailer. Got her in four low for the steep climb, and here we go. about there should be good and then if the remote will work from here we'll go ahead and drop the trailer down oh yeah we're going down so there you have it guys got my hands full but um, hope you enjoyed this video a little bit different like I said doing the um, CDL hotshot rig with the tandem dual 40 foot trailer moving those big containers. So figured I'd take you guys along something a little different and um, You know, maybe encourage you guys to just make the best use out of your downtime if at all possible We're blessed to have other friends in the industry, but um, 
yeah, truck was in the transmission shop for a couple days and we were able to uh, kind of keep making money and keep uh, bringing you guys hotshot content. So praise God. Thank you all for listening. I hope, uh, hope you're encouraged to know that the Lord does not change as much as this world changes and there's not much reliable to count on. God is good and he's always there for you. So praise God. Thanks again for watching guys and I will see you on the next video.